you. Uh, I want to make sure that we're comfortable with uh, the factoring that we have done so far. So page 70 is a little bit weird. So what you can see we have there is tri a bunch of trinomials, but they're not complete. Yes? So what I'm asking for is a number here that will make this work. Now, notice that I specify an integer. That is from earlier in the year. Does anybody remember the definition of an integer? All right. Well, an integer is any positive or negative number that is x over 1. So any positive or negative number that isn't a decimal or a fraction. All right? So, what we are dealing with here, and I'm going to do the first one, then you're going to do the next two, and then we'll talk about the ones after that. What we are dealing with here is we don't know this, right? So, if there was a number there, I would need to multiply to that number, yes? And add to what? No. One. Everybody understand? So I need a number with factors that will add to 1. How can I make that happen? Jack. Positive 8 and negative 7. Would that get me 1? Okay. So what is 8 times negative 7? So is negative 56 an integer I could put there? Excellent. Is it the only integer I could put there? Of course not. What else could I put there? Gersail. Okay. What else could I put there? Addison. Could I not do 3 minus 2? Which would mean what would that number be? Negative 6. What else could I put there? 9 and 8. Which would mean that number would be what? Negative 72. So, what is the only rule here? No, no, no. About my choices. They got to be one apart, right? Which one is the bigger, bigger one? Which one is negative? The bigger one or the smaller one? Smaller one, because we used 8 and 7, and we made 7 the negative. Because we needed to get to positive 1. Everybody cool? Great. So tell me, 3 that could go in number 2. Some of you will say, I can't do that, because you're using a B. That is, of course, a load of horse pucky. So come up with 3 numbers that are not these 3 numbers that you could put here. Go. It should take about 5 seconds. Who has one for me? Jersey Hill. Well, we, that right here. I said not the three we already have. So let's try another one. And I don't want the nine minus eight. I want the number that is going to go there. See, that's what I'm asking you to do. Great. One? How would that work? Two. What kind of two? Negative 2. Who has another one for me? Pardeet. Negative 20. Who has another one for me? Negative 30. Why? Because that's 2. Sorry. That's 2 minus 1. That's 5 minus 4. And that's 6 minus 5. Yeah? Great. Do three more for number 3. They can't be 56, 6, 72, or 2, 20, 30. This should take about three seconds. Go.
Who has one for me? Addison. Negative 90. Why? Because it's 10 minus 9. Go on. Jacqueline. Nick, we already had negative 20 right here. That's okay. Braden, because negative 20 is still right. Negative 12, because that's 4 minus 3. He waited patiently. Oh, Amelia. Ooh, 110. Nice. Because that is, of course, 11 minus 10. Yeah? Excellent. What's different about 4? No, look. 4 is different. This is subtraction now, yes? So I have to equal negative 1, don't I? So what will happen to these two numbers? Will, 10 and, will negative 90 work? Yeah. Why? Nine minus ten. Will negative thirty work? Why? He waited patiently for his students to see the pattern that he talked about here, talked about here, talked about here, and how it changes here. Gersahill. There you go. So this will be 5 minus 6. Will negative uh, 132 work? Why? Um, 11, minus 12. 11 minus 12. Yay! What's different about 5? It's a 2 now. So what do we know about our factors? How far apart must they be? 2. So give me a number that will work here. 4. Why? Mm. 2. Yeah, okay. Here's the hill. Okay. Amelia. 120. Why? And would it be a positive 120? Can it be positive 120? Yes or no? No, it has to be negative. Why? What? I'm multiplying two negatives, right? And since this has to be negative, I have to have different signs, don't I? Okay, so why will 120 work? Because negative 120 works. Why? Here's it. Because positive 10 minus 12 is negative. Excellent. Now give me another one. Negative 24. Why? 4 minus 6. Now give me another one. Your sale. Um, negative, 15. negative 15 because 3 minus 5 and so on and so on and so on. Yes? Okay. We shift gears for number 6. What? That's what's missing. So what do I, what do I have there that I know? I have to multiply to 6. So what are my options? 1 and 6 and 2 and 3, right? Okay, so if that's positive, what do both of these have to be? Or negative. As long as they're the same sign, it'll work, right? So if I'm using this, what number is going there? Addison? Not quite. What is it, Braden? Seven. What kind of seven? Or negative seven. What else could it be? Oh, now I see, Addison. You, did, you just did this one, where it's two and three. 
but Addison, I was giving you an out. I know you did one and six, but I was giving you a way out to say that you just did two and three first because two plus three is five. I was letting you get out of it, man. I was throwing you a frickin' bone here to quote Dr. Evil. What's not to understand? Well, isn't one times six, six? So those are the two factors that I would have to add to get seven. Right? Why is it allowed to be negative? Because negative one times negative six is positive six. Right? Okay, so what are my options for seven? It has to multiply to ten, so what are my options? One and ten and two and five. So what are my options for this blank? Eleven, positive or minus, and seven positive or minus. Everybody good? Now, you ask why I would make you do this. Well, because if you get locked into thinking of, you know, what we are doing and locked into steps, you kind of forget what's going on with the math. The number eight's very strange, yes? Because we have not done anything with a four there, with any number there, unless we've been able to divide it out, right? Can we divide a four out of nine? No, but we have done stuff that looks like this. What is special about 4x squared and 9y squared? They're both perfect, They're both perfect squares, yes? But this one's positive. So could this be 0? You're just saying yes and no, Gersa Hill. Can it or can it not be 0? When that one's positive, this can be zero? No. no. What would this have to be for that to be zero? Negative. Negative. Then we'd have a difference of squares, wouldn't we? Right? So since this is positive, I must need some number here, right? Can anybody guess what it might be? I got three, I got ten, I got two. We're all over the map here, aren't we? Addison, we got a five. Thirty-six is actually, I think, right. How could he be right? Addison, you're on the right track. Yes, four times nine is thirty-six, indeed. But let's see why. If I was going to factor this, I know I need this, yes? Right? And I know if that's a perfect square and that's a perfect square, I know I need 2x and 3y, right? And 2x and 3y, right? And if they're both positive, will 3 times 3 get me positive 9y squared? Will it? Yeah, if they were both negative, will negative 3y and negative 3y get me 9y squared? Okay, so we know that this will work for the 4 and it'll work for the 9, yeah? Well, if it'll work for 4 and 9, it must work for the middle, yes? What is 2 times 2? What is 2 times 2? 4x squared, right? Yeah. What is 3 times 3? Three? 9y squared. So we're covered on the ends, yes? What's the only place we haven't talked about the middle? What is 2 times 3? 6. What is 3 times 2? 6. 6. What is 6 plus 6? 12. 12. Now, he said 36, right? And I said that's kind of right. Why is it kind of right? 12 is still in the, in the mix, yes? 12 times 3 is 36. So... Even though I haven't shown you this, Braden took a chance that the numbers here would be useful. And he used 4 and 9 to get 36. I assume that's what you did. And then Addison said, oh, because 4 times 9 is 36, right? Now, I jumped and right away said right because I remembered that it was 6 and 6, but I multiplied them, right? But when we show it, it's no big deal, yes? Okay. Read this question. Is that 
a, a real life number. No, of course it isn't, right? You would not go to Home Depot and say, I got to buy enough flooring to cover the, the floor of my kitchen. And the guy says, well, how big's your kitchen? Well, I tell you, it's X squared plus 7X plus 12. What would the guy do? Well, he'd want to punch you in the mouth. Exactly. Because that, that's stupid, yes? Right? If you were to do that in Home Depot, you would go to your floor, you would measure it, you would find that was 8 and that was 10, and you would need 80 square feet of flooring, yes? We know that from like grade 5, yeah? Okay. How did you know 8 and 10 would mean I needed 80? You multiply them because area is length times width, yeah? So 8 times 10 are the factors and 80 is the product, yes? And we have already seen this when we've been doing our factoring with our algebra tiles, right? Okay, so the situation we have now is we have a rectangle. That rectangle is not 80. How big is it? No. 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 Thank you. The question says the area of the rectangle is 97, 112, 842. You're getting warm. Uh, uh, 609. I'm still warm. Right? Come on, guys. It says right there, given the area of a rectangle. Now, what does that mean is the length and the width. They are factors of that, aren't they? So, how will we find the length and the width? Absolutely. And to figure out that question, I would need to multiply to what? And add to what? So what is it? X plus 3. X plus 4. All right. Now... Difficult. I want to know the area of the shaded region. Yes, of course this is normal area. How do you find the area of the pink region? How do you find the area of every rectangle? Length times the width. Well, what are our length and width here, Jacqueline? So this will get me the pink area, yes? How do I find the green area? Right? And what math will I do once I have both those areas? You would subtract, right? Because this stuff isn't colored in. Easy peasy, right? So let's go. What's this one? Seven. 15x squared. Thanks, Jade. What's this one? Everyone wait. Everyone wait. Wait for Emma. It's a five. It's a three. And a four. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm moving it from twelve. Is it twelve x? Wait a minute. I think it's twelve x. It's negative twelve x. I knew it. Way to go. Yeah. Yay! What's this one? <laughs> Wait, Emma, redeem yourself. Yes, there is. Yeah, and then what do we do with all of that? What's 15x plus nothing? 15x squared and then plus 13x minus 20. Right? Right? Okay, now what do we do for the green ones? Now we're going to add them together. 
No, we got to multiply them together. What's the first one? Oh, oh it's, it's 2x squared. What's the second one? It's 4x squared. No. no. Plus 4x. What's the third one? 6x. Plus 6x. What's the last one? 12. Plus 12. Plus what do I do there? We add them together. And what math has to happen now? Just add them together. Add them? Subtract. Add. Here, Subtract. Wait, wait, wait. This is a very productive argument. Okay, no, it really is. Trust me. Trust me. I know you guys are just being clowns, but this is actually a really useful discussion to have here. Yes. If I subtract, don't yell out your answer, okay? If you subtract, over here, write your answer. Just write it. Don't yell it out. Just write it if you believe Braden is correct and you should subtract. Okay? Now... Just, I'm about to throw Emma, possibly throw Emma under the bus too. Emma says we should add. All right? No, 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 no. Go. I, of course, will write the right answer in orange right here. I know, sneaky, hey? So, who has an answer when they subtract it? Who would like to volunteer their answer? I'm not saying it's going to be right or wrong. I just want to see some answers. What do we got? Jazreet, what do you got? Plus 23x minus 8. Okay. Do I have any other answers? M. Okay, do I have any other answers? Jaden, Jaden, whoa, dude, dude, just because you're tall and you get to get your hand higher, that's hurtful to us short people, okay? You just quit, quit rubbing our face in it, okay? I'm never going to be taller than 5'8", just drop it, okay? It's hurtful. I'm just kidding, Jaden. Jaden, what you got? Go. No. Jacqueline, what do you got? Any other guesses? Ready? Oh, wait, Addison. Wait, I'm writing your answer. Does it matter? <laughs> Addison's quote, does it matter? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Does it matter? Question mark. What? Shh. You're giving us away. Well, you're giving me away. All right. The right answer. Ready for the big reveal? Okay. Now, stop for a second. Here is the problem. This is the area of one whole rectangle, right? So what math would hold this all together? Brackets. Now, what am I doing? I am removing a second whole rectangle, yes? So that means I got 15 minus 2. Then... I got 13 minus 10, 
right? Then I got negative 20 minus 12. 13, 3, negative 32. Everybody understand? Now, what Addison was saying, couldn't you just take a negative and put it in front of all of these? Absolutely correct. And then you're adding, aren't you? That's why I said adding and subtraction. You could do either one. Now, what if, what if this was minus 12? What would your answer be now? Forget all the work. Just pretend that this one is minus 12. So is it still going to be 13x squared? Is it still going to be plus 3x? What is the last one going to be? Negative eight, because this is minus, minus, which becomes plus 12. Yeah? Yeah. Huh? Because uh, uh, the Volkswagen odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Deep cleansing breath. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. No, I said hold it. Keep that deep cleansing breath in. Now try to take in two more deep breaths. <laughs> One more. Hold it. Now breathe out. Now, the reason I got you to do that is because if you take a deep breath, you get most of your lungs full, but there is still garbage air in your lungs. You take two more deep breaths to get clean air to fill them right up, and then you get rid of them all. Okay? Now, the reason I'm asking you to do that is because your brain cannot function without a good supply of oxygen. And what we are about to do is the hardest kind of factoring that you will do in the 10th grade. So I want everybody ready to roll. Okay? So, please notice, up until now, we have done some trinomial work, yes? And all of our trinomials have looked like this. Right? Right? And when we factor those, we need numbers that multiply to whatever C is and add to whatever B is, right? Okay, notice we have never done anything with a number there, have we? You're smart kids. If that's C, that's B, what is that? A. A. Now notice, we are going to do trinomials when A doesn't equal 1. Because up until now, that's been a 1. Everybody good? Yes, Addison. Is that symbol that like is equal to the logarithm? That means it does not Yes. Does not equal. Unequal. No, it's not Ghostbusters. Right? Who are you going to call? Equal Busters. No, no. It's not that. Okay? It's not, it's not, you know, don't do math here. It's not like no smoking. Right? This, this room is do math. Okay. All right. Everybody good? Okay. So here we go. Now, in order to do this now listen to me please there are at least six methods that you can do this kind of factoring at least everybody listening i personally only know of four now in my past I used to teach one way, the way that I learned when I was your age. And that is actually the best way to do this because it helps reinforce other kinds of factoring. But it's very confusing. So I don't like to use it. There are two other ways that, and this is an evil word in math, and I don't like saying it before I've taught you why something works, there are shortcuts. 
But they're so much easier to work with that I actually use them. Okay? And then there's the fourth way that I know, which is the newest way that people seem to be taught this. And that way is, I have no idea what the answer is, so I'm just going to guess a bunch of numbers until I get the one that works. It is trial and error, or the way we like to say it now so it doesn't hurt your feelings, because heaven forbid you people ever make an error, we call it guess and check. You tell me. I know that. Uh, now, Rylan, I would disagree with that, except that when a kid doesn't get their gold star for just participating, they cry. Anyways, so in order to do this well, we must be able to completely backwards, forwards, upside down, underwater, in our sleep. If you were taught it in Sanskrit, you must be able to understand all the ramp. Sanskrit, it's, an ang- it's a language. From Persia, way, way back in the day. Like, like millennia ago. Anyways, it's a dead language. Don't worry about it. The only people that still use Sanskrit are yoga instructors. No, not Yoda. Yoga. Now, right now, is this factored or expanded? It is factored. What would we do with it? We would expand it. And how would we expand it? We would do x squared plus 6x plus 4x plus 24 and add it all up. Now, if we got to there, there, of course, we would factor it backwards, and you would need to multiply to 24 and add to 10. All of us can do this, no problemo, yes? Yes, yes? Yes. Uh, 260. Zero, not a one. Up where? Oh, 4x, yeah. 6 plus 4 is 10. What? 24. Sorry, what? Tell you what, I'm going to see the future and see how far along you guys are by that point. I got nothing. Because, of course, if I could see the future, Emma, what would I already have done? I would have won the lottery and I would be out of here. All right. (coughs) Everybody can do this backwards and forwards, yes? Okay. Now, let's look at the next one. Is that factored or expanded? Factored. So let's expand it. 6x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 2. Yes? And then I would get 6x squared minus, sorry, plus x minus 2. And that would be my product. Yes? Now, you already know... Yes, Jacqueline? Oh, it is minus x. I was right the first time. Yes, thank you. Okay. Now, you already know that the green one is this factored. Yes? You don't know how to get from here to the green one, though. That hasn't been taught you. You know how to do it. <coughs> you know how to do it when there's nothing out in front, but now we got a six, right? 
So now I'm going to show you the way I don't like using, which is guess and check, because this is a real easy one to show guess and check. Tell me if you can see some relationship between 2, 3, and 6, and 1, and 2, and 2. What is the relationship? J Braden. You cool? Yeah. Right? So that is the first method of doing this, that is guessing and checking. Now, when it's six and two, it's not very hard, is it? Because how many factors does six have? It could be six and one or two and three, right? There's only two pairs that it could be. How many pairs could be the two? Only one pair, one and two, right? So it's real easy to guess and check. Everybody cool? Everybody see how you do it? Method one, which is guess and check, which I don't like, is simply two numbers, or sorry, not two numbers, two factors of A, two factors of C, and then you just try them until you get it to work. Everybody sees this, right? It's pretty easy, yeah? Now, the reason I don't like this one is what if, and don't write this down. I just want to show you why I don't like it. What if I had um, 12x squared plus uh, 18... plus 216, no, wait, I'm sorry, um, 110x. Now, if you're going to guess and check, what are my factors of 12? 3 and 4, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, right? Everyone agree? So my answer could be three and four. It could be four and three. It could be one and 12. It could be 12 and one. It could be two and six. It could be six and two. Does everybody understand? And we haven't even talked about 18. What could 18 be? One and 18 or 18 and one. 2 and 9, or 9 and 2, 3 and 6, or 6 and 3. And all of a sudden, you're guessing and checking 87 pairs of factors. How many of you have ever felt time pressure on a test? Do you want to have to guess and check 87 pairs? No. Or are you willing to learn a way that always finds you the right answer the first try? I'd like to learn that one, personally. So... I'm going to skip the super confusing one that I learned. I'm not even going to show it to you, okay? Not even going to show it to you. If you already know that super confusing one, you know how to factor this already. Are you allowed to use that super confusing one? Yes. Yes, of course you are. So, let's go. So, the second method. And I don't know what these are called, so I'm just not even going to call them anything, all right? I learned this method like 10 years ago because I was trying to find a new way to factor these that kids could understand. And it was in the, uh, actually, yeah, it was about 10 years ago. Um, and I found it on the internet on an Australian math website, <laughs> right? Okay, so this is what we do. We start with 6x squared minus x minus 2. Now, if there was no 6 there, I would need to multiply to 2 and add to 1, wouldn't I? Everyone agrees, right? But there is a 6 there, which means this first number is now 6 times bigger than it was when we, st when we knew how to do it, right? When we knew how to do it, it was a 1. Now it's 6. So if this is multiplied by 6... 
then this needs to multiply by 6. So now I need to multiply to negative 12. All right? So my first step is do A times C, whatever they are. Everybody cool? Because obviously I need something six times bigger than what I used to have, correct? All right. Now here's where it gets weird. I still add to negative one. Okay, now you got to trust me. Remember I told you the other way that works is very confusing to do. You got to trust me here, okay? And let's work with this. So, what are the factors of negative 12 that add to negative 1? Is it 1 and 12? Is it 2 and 6? Is it 3 and 4? How? Right, 3 minus 4, right? So, I know it's 3 minus 4, yeah? So, here's what I do. If there was no 6 there, it would be x plus 3 and x minus 4. Agreed? But we had to multiply by 6, yes? Doesn't factoring reverse expansion? And isn't expansion multiplication? What is the reverse of multiplication? So I got to divide now, right? The only reason I knew it was 3 and 4 was because I multiplied by 6, right? So what should I divide by now? I got to divide by 6. So the first thing is A times C. That is new. I got to add to B. And then I got to divide by A. So I've divided by 6. Everybody cool? Now... Mrs. Bad Crumble would never let you leave that fraction, would she? What is that fraction? One half. X plus one half. Would she ever let you leave that fraction? No. X minus two thirds. Does everyone agree? Now I need you to stop writing now and just watch what's going to happen on the screen. I need you to watch. You need to pay attention. I had x plus one half, and I had x minus two thirds, right? Does everyone agree? If I know those fractions make it scary, but what would we do? What should we do there? If we were going to expand it, what would we do? We'd multiply it out. What would x times x be? X squared. Everyone agrees? What would be x times negative 2 thirds? Negative 2 thirds x. Agreed? What would be 1 half times x? Plus 1 half x, right? And what would be 1 half times negative 2 thirds? Negative 2 sixths. Do we agree? Then I would get x squared. Now, these are both x's, yes? So I should combine them, shouldn't I? So I'm going to do that over here. And again, you don't have to write this down. I just want to show you what is happening. Negative two-thirds plus one-half. Can I add those? No. What do I got to do? I got to get a common denominator, which is six, right? So I multiplied that by two. So what do I do to this guy? To get negative four. Agreed? What do I do to this guy? Times by three. So what do I got to do to this guy? Times by three to get positive three. Yes? Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 sixth, yeah? So I have negative 1 sixth x minus 2 sixths, yes? Fractions scare us, right? Right? Fractions bother us, be honest. I don't want those fractions there. How do I get rid of divided by 6? I multiply by 6, right? What 6 times x squared? 6x squared. What 6 times 1 sixth? Cancel, cancel. What's left? Negative x. What 6 times 2 sixths? Cancel, cancel. Minus 2. Everybody see that? 
Everybody cool? If I take these and I multiply them out, I get this, right? And then if I multiply that by six to get rid of those denominators, I get what I'm looking for. Everybody good? Now watch. I showed you that because the next thing I'm going to show you looks like magic. And you, I don't want you to have to trust me. I want you to see that it works. When you get to here and everything is simplified, you take the denominator and you slide it to the front. You take that denominator and you slide it to the front. And you get 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 2, which is what I had right there. Does everybody see? Most kids say to me, why? Why do you move the denominators? Well, because if you actually did all the math, you see that it works out. But I'm trying to save you some time. Everybody cool? Now, we're going to do like 20 of these, so you can chill if you don't quite get it. Addison. Does that mean that you can reverse that and take the 2 out of it and just go straight to x, x plus 1, one half and then x minus You want to leave it like that? No, I'm asking from the beginning of the question when you have a very beginning. This? If, if, you, if you were to divide this by 6 to make it like what we like, right? With no number out front, is that what you're asking? The 2x plus 1. Yes. 3x minus 2. Yeah. These ones, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can, but you can't factor them out because 2 doesn't... Oh, you're saying do this. Do that factoring, GCF them both. Well, that would get you not, when you foil it out, you wouldn't get this. You would get the fractions of that. All right? So you cannot do that. But I told you I'm going to show you three methods, right? What you're talking about works on the third method. So the third method is the same thing. You start the same way. So I still need to multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1. But instead of going x and x, I do 6x and 6x. It's still 3 and 4, so it's 6x minus 3. Sorry, 6x plus 3 and 6x minus 4. Everybody cool to there? Now... What do you see there that's a type of factoring we already know how to do? GCF. So that becomes 2x plus 1 because I divided by 3, right? What's the factoring there that we know how to do? GCF. What am I going to divide by? And I get 3x minus 2. And I get the same answer. The reason I'm not too keen on this one is because when you do that GCF, too many of you bring the 6 out to the front. And in this case, you don't need to. Is everybody good? At least a tiny bit. All right, let's look at our very first one. You've got three methods that you could try with 20 and 10. Is guess and check a good one here? Why not? Too many factors of 20, right? 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. 10, 1 and 10, 2 and 5, right? Six different groups of factors I have to check. I don't like that one. I don't want to use it. So let's go to one of the other ones. In both of these, I have to do this math. I got to multiply to what? No. 20, no. No, A times C. 200. And I got to add to what? 
I still add to B. Add to 33. Is it 1 in 200? No. 2 in 100? 4 and 50? 5 and 40? 8 and 25? Yeah. Right? Right? So, now I have a choice. I could go B plus 8 and B plus 25, but it's not really 8 and 25, is it? Because what did I do to get 8 and 25? I had to multiply by 20, didn't I? So what do I need to do now? Divide by 20. Would Mrs. Bag Crumble let those fractions live? What's this one simplify to? Two over five. What does this one simplify to? Five over four. What do I do with my denominators? Slide them to the front. Now, what is five times four? 20. I needed the 20, didn't I? What is 2 times 5? I needed a 10, didn't I? If the, middle, if the ends work, the middle works. Everybody good? I chose a really hard one first to show you that it's not that hard compared to this one we did with little numbers. It's the same thing, right? Now, Emma, you had your hand on the way up. Of course. That is method 2. Now, I showed you another method, didn't I? We know it's 8 and 25. You also could have done this. 20B plus 8 and 20B plus 25. Oh, that's crowded now. Let me make that bigger. 20B plus 25. Would we ever leave this? What's coming out of there? 4. 5B plus 2. Because in this case, I'm not bringing the 4 out to the front. And this, of course, is 5 to get 4B plus 5. And I get the same answer. Is everybody cool? Gersahill. No. There isn't. So don't worry about it. Yo. How many... Examples are on the page, Jaden. Am I going to do it more? Okay. Are these littler numbers? Could we try guess and check? What multiplies to three? It's got three and one, right? Everyone agree? What multiplies to ten? One and ten or two and five, right? Okay, which one do you want to try first? Two and five, okay, two and five. So now I got to do some multiplying, right? Three times two is six. One times five is five. Are six and five going to get me 13? No. Okay, so I can't go straight across. What if I go diagonally? What's three times five? 15. What's two times one? Two. Hey, will 15 and two somehow get me negative 13? Which one? Negative 15 plus 2, right? Okay, so what can I do with 3 and 5 to make that negative 15? Make something negative, right? Which one? If I make the 3 negative, then I would have a negative 3s squared at the front, wouldn't I? Because 1 would be negative, 1 would be positive. So if I make the 5 negative, now I get 3 S, because we're using S instead of X, minus 5. And what's this one? What's this one? 1 S minus 2? Plus 2. Now let's check. Is 3 times 1 3 S squared? Is negative 5 times positive 2 negative 10? So are we right? Yes. Guess and check, lovely, because there were only a couple of choices. We got it on almost the first try, didn't we? When we used 3 and 1 and 2 and 5. 
right? Now we might have gone three and five and two and gone three times five to get 15, one times two to get two. Oh, if I'd done five and two, it could have worked straight across, right? Is everybody with me? Six. Now this one's tricky. Look closely at it. Right away I see I don't like that six, right? That means it's one of these new hard ones, right? But is there something I can do before I start what I just learned? Jacqueline. I can GCF out of what? Three. And now I have 2x squared minus 7x plus 3, right? Is this a good guess and checker? <coughs> Why? They're little numbers, aren't they? There's no real choices. 2 and 1, 3 and 1. Let's go straight across first. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. Do 6 and 1 get me 7 in any way? How? How? But I need negative 7, right? So I have to do two negatives, yeah? So it must be minus 3 minus 1, right? So 3, because I can't forget that 3. 2x minus 3 and x minus 1. Now let's check. 2 times x, is that 2x squared? 3 times 1, is that 3? So we're right. Easy peasy. Because the numbers are small. Now let's say you are all of a sudden, you've fallen in love with this guessing and checking. You're like, damn, son, that's the way I want to go. Is that okay? What if the numbers are big? Will it still work? Eventually. Should you have some other tools in your tool belt just in case? I think so. I mean, you could build a whole house using a screwdriver and a hammer, right? And a handsaw. Yeah? Have you ever gone, seen a construction site where there's no power tools? Of course not. Why do you have power tools? To make it easier and faster. So if you're cool with this, it will get you through. Use it. It's my gift to you. However, I would like to have another method in my pocket just in case. Everybody cool? So I'm going to do a couple of the ones in one of the other methods now. Everyone's all right with that? So what am I going to do here? I don't like that 8, and I can't divide it out, can I? Because 18 doesn't divide by 8, and 5 doesn't divide by 8, right? So I got to do this. I got to multiply to what now? Negative 40, and add to what now? Negative 18. Is it 1 and 40? Is it 2 and 20? Yeah, go. Yeah. Is it 2 and 20? It's amazing how often people need to go to the washroom and how often I will hear. I don't know how to do this when they get back. How will that make me negative 18? Negative 2? Negative 20, right? Okay, so I'm going to do the first method first, which is P minus 20. But it's not minus 20. Because the only reason I know it's 20 is because I multiplied by 8, right? So what do I need to do? I got to get rid of that 8 now. And it's not P plus 2 because I multiplied by 8. So what do I got to do? I got to get rid of that 8 now. Would Mrs. Bag Crumble let that fraction stay there? No. What is it? Four over 2? Four over two? Five over two. And what about two eighths? One over four. What do I do with those denominators? Slide them. P, 2P minus five. 4P plus one. Do I ever need to go, Mr. Mize, Mr. Mize, is it right? Is it right? Why not? Because you can check. What's 2 times 4, Jade? 8. Looks good to me. 
What's negative 5 times positive 1? Negative 5. Looks good to me. Everybody good? Now, I don't mean to pick on you. What did you learn last year to factor these? Did you learn the square like this, or did you learn one of these? You did like this? Okay, thanks. I only ask because I, I need to know what's, what other people are doing around here. All right, let's look at five. Does five bother us right now? Yeah. The numbers are big, right? Let's check if we can make them smaller, can we? I can divide them all by what? Four. four. Can I forget about that four? No, no got to keep it. 6h squared minus 5h minus 6, right? Right? Okay. Now I'm going to use one of the other methods. I can't get rid of that 6 anymore, so I got to multiply it. I got to multiply to what? Negative 36. And I got to add to what? Negative 5. Is it 1 and 36? Is it 2 and 18? Yeah, yeah. You've been talking to Gersahill a lot, hey? Is your name Pardeep? Yes. No. Yes. No. It's not 2 and 18. Is it 3 and 12? Is it 4 and 9? How? 4 minus 9 is negative 5, right? Now, we're going to do the other method. In the first method, you started with P. In this method, you start with 6H minus 4, 6H minus 9. Do you like that? You like that? I hate that. Why? They can be simplified to what? 3H minus 2 because I divided by 2, right? Do you like this? No. I hate this. Why? Now, is 3 times 2, 6? I see your hand, Jack, and I'll be right there. Is 3 times 2, 6? Is 2 times 3, 6? No. Negative 2 and negative 3. And what was left out at the front that I can't forget about? The four from the very beginning. Jack. No, because H times H gets me my H squared. Everybody cool? Does everybody have a method that works for them? Everybody has one that they're at least able to like, if you were talking to the kid beside you, you could sort it out. All right, let's do three more, and then I'm shutting up. And you're going to try 72 tonight. Page 72. No, you're not going to try 72 questions. I know. Okay. Two and six, little numbers, right? So is this a good one to try, guess, and check? Okay, what is two going to be? Two and one. What's six going to be? Could be two and three. Could be three and two. Could be one and six, right? Okay. So what do you want to try first? One and six that way? Okay. What's two times one? What's one times six? Will two and six get me 13? No. All right. So let's try, uh, sorry, let's try one and six. What's two times one? Two. All right. We just did that one. Sorry. Um, what's six and one? What's two times six? What's one times one? Will 12 and one get me 13? And everything's positive, right? So it must be two N plus six and one N plus one. Let's check. Is two times one, two N squared? Is six times one, six? Huh. Does that work? Let's six and two. Wait a minute. It doesn't work, does it? Because two times one is two N and six N. That's only 11 N. Where does the six need to be? Does that one work? 
Does that one work? Two times two, two times one is two. One times six is six. That one works because two times six is 12 and one times, right? So it's not quite enough, right? To just check the square. You got it. The other reason I don't really like guess and check is now you got to check the middle. Okay? But if you like it, you can keep it. What about this one? Guess and check or one of my methods? I don't care. What do you want to see? So Jade says three and one and four and one. Twelve and three. Or twelve and one. No dice. Okay? All right. Well, what about if I went uh, one and four? Three and four. Well, that'd be seven. All right. Well, what are my other options? Could I do... Three times four to get 12 and one times one to get one. Does that get me eight? No, barfy. Okay, so one and four is probably not going to work. So let's try two and two. What's three times two? Six. Six. What's two times one? Will six and two make me eight? Yes. 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 Okay, so three T plus two and T plus two. Then we check. 3t times t, t squared, yeah? 2 times 2, 4, yeah? 3 times 2 is 6t. 2 times 1 is 2t. Is 6t and 2t 8t? So we're good. Everybody good? Guess and check is it's working fairly well for us right now, right? But remember, it's not always going to work, Right? Well, it'll always work, but it'll sometimes take forever. So let's practice one of our other methods here. I got to multiply to what? 14 and add to what? Is it 1 and 14? Of course it is. 1 plus 4. Okay. So M plus 1 over what? 2, and m plus 14 over what? Simplify the fractions. Does that simplify? No. So where does the denominator go? To the front. 2m plus 1. Does that simplify? To what? 7. No denominator. m plus 7. 2 times 7, or sorry, 2 times m, 2m, 1 times 7, 7. We got it. Addison. Can you do that again from a fraction? Um, okay. Does that get any simpler? So you slide the denominator to the front. What's 14 divided by 2? So? No, because the factors were 1 and 14. Oh, okay. Everybody good? Now, hold it a minute. Uh, you can do number 16 and number 17, no, 16, 18, and 19 are going to cause you great, maybe even 15, are going to cause you great deals of, rah, try them, if you can figure them out, that makes me super happy. You do know how to do them, I've already shown you how to do both of them, but I want to see what I get. Exactly what we did before. I didn't mean I didn't mean to say seventeen. Fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, and nineteen. <coughs> there is something weird about nine though. What's weird? It's a fourth there, right? So it can't be T times T in the final answer. What must it be? T squared times T squared. Does anything else change? No. Everybody go.